Parties, uh, I want to start by asking you, uh, I'm sure you've heard on Monday, a federal judge denied an emergency motion for relief from Guantanamo Bay hunger strikers, despite having heard expert medical testimony that guards, quote, displayed deliberate indifference to inmates' worsening medical needs and forcibly fed them using an IV while preventing them from drinking potable water. Now, you were just there at Guantanamo Bay. Uh, what are the conditions like and, and what do you make of what uh, the, the medical expert had to say to the judge? Um, right. I was at Guantanamo uh, about a week ago, and I met with a few of our clients there. Um, what I can say is that the situation is an emergency. Um, there are people in critical condition. The men that I sat across from and, and met have lost over 30 and 40 pounds. Um, they were incredibly weak. They told me of other people in the prison who are skeletal skin and bones um, who can barely move. Uh, what the military had been doing as a response um, had been to move people from the communal camps in um, Camp 6, which is where most of the men had been held. It was a communal facility to Camp 5, uh, which is a solitary confinement facility when they were falling ill and losing consciousness. Um, and then at that point, starting force feeding, which is basically how the authorities are saving saving life um, at Guantanamo right now. So. There is um, there's a critical situation going on right now. I mean, I think separate from the immediate crisis of the hunger strike, there has been this broader emergency at Guantanamo that I think people are finally remembering and waking up to, which is the fact of over 11 years of detention of 166 people, who have most of whom have never been charged, will never be charged, and more than half of whom, as you said, and, have been approved for transfer. And, and Pardis, I'm glad that you outlined it so thoroughly because the reality is there's a lot of blame placed, you know, amongst advocates, uh, human rights advocates, justice advocates, people saying this is on the Obama administration for failing to live up to the promise, this is on Congress. But something that I, I found surprising was the judge said he didn't have jurisdiction over this matter. He went on to say that one of the petitioners, one of the detainees, Mus'ab Omar al-Madwani, uh, who is said to be, quote, in imminent danger, according to the medical expert of his death, had self-manufactured his health situation. That was the judge's wording there. Is that a fair accusation, in your opinion, coming from the judge? No, I think that's a really unfortunate um, finding. Um, this is a man who has been detained without charge for over 11 years, like most of the men at Guantanamo. I think he in particular had been approved for transfer. Um, so to say that he is responsible for his own conditions and for the reasons for his protest, um, I think is really unfortunate. Brandon, I wanna just ask you about the conditions there as they were outlined in the New York Times op-ed. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Um, we've heard four less than lethal shots were fired when they were trying to forcibly move the detainees. I'm curious, these descriptions of systematic torture and so on and so forth, um, do, and the doctor's description of the imminent danger that these detainees uh, face in terms of their actual ability to live. Is that, is that realistic and accurate in your opinion based on your, your time there as a guard? I would say, yeah, I would say uh, it's probably a lot worse than what's in the op-ed. Uh, I would say whatever, you know, the government puts out is, is only going to be a fraction to what it really is. Um, I mean, the fact is they're never going to tell you, you know, the truth. They don't want it to get out. Um, you know, the sad part is the only way that Guantanamo even gets any attention now is when these detainees do have these hunger strikes. This is their form of protest, and after 11 years, just hunger striking, if that's all they're doing, I mean, we're, we're lucky, because if I had been locked up for 11 years, I'd be doing a lot more than hunger striking, especially without charge. A lot of people forget that more people have died at Guantanamo than have ever been convicted in military commission support. Um, this is something that needs to be closed. We need to deal with the truly guilty people. But the bad part is that we'll never bring them to the federal court system because we use torture to get a lot of information we have. So we'll never bring them here. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a lot worse than what, what they're actually saying. And the sad part is, I'd hate to say it, but we're going to lose probably more detainees before the situation is any better, if, if ever. And a lot of them are just ready to leave and, and go home. If that's worth dying for, instead of sitting there for the rest of their lives forever, I mean, that's what... You know, that's the choice they made. And Brandon, they Brandon, Brandon for, forgive me for interrupting you, but I want to ask you, based on what you said, we're going to lose a lot of detainees. I'm assuming you mean that they're going to die. Yeah, I, I believe that they've reached the point to where they're willing to, to, to die, if that's what it's called for, if that's what they have to do, instead of sitting there. They don't know if they're going to be released tomorrow or they're going to be released in 30 years or never. Well, I mean, a lot of them have been there 11 years with no charge. Over half of them are cleared for release. And, um, and the fact is a lot of people should have been held there in the first place.